I could fall on. Any situation, brothers, I could call on. All we gotta do is log on. Send a chain message, seeing this to God's home. A brother need help now. No matter what it is, we deny self now. Nobody getting let down. For the most time, we gotta put our best down. Man, I love this brotherhood. On the road again, hitting up another hood. Up north, down south, midwest, it don't matter, we gon' bring it out. Scriptures keep ringing out. We gon' speak it, we gon' rap it, even sing it out. Camp shirts blinging out. We gon' shine with this law, what you be about? You be about. All right, all right. Shalom. Most high in Christ bless everybody. Welcome to today's topic. I'm Brother Raphael to my right. I'm brother Anab. And to my left. Brother Jacob. Today's topic is dealing with something that we're still dealing with that crisis that they call the, uh, the, the corona situation. But here's the question. It says, if the righteous scarcely be saved, because what, is it, what does it mean to be righteous? Because it says, if the righteous scarcely be saved, understand something. Who could be saved? You so-called blacks and you so-called Hispanics whose fathers are of Negro and any descent. We are the biblical Israelites. Understand that. And that's the question. Because a lot of people out here, they're going out here, they're sinning willfully. They're doing things against the most high. Not taking things serious and not understanding that this is serious out here. Okay. Um, and we, you have to understand something, y'all. We have to keep commandments in the faith of Christ. That's the only way we're going to be able to get out of this situation that we're in. Okay. And that's what our people would never understand. I mean, we run to, you know, the so called leaders of this country to try to get answers of what's going on. But how do we be saved out of this situation that we're in? Because you have to understand something. Throughout history, the Israelites always had a savior, always was being saved out of a Saved from what? Because some people love to say, I'm saved. They love to say that. You hear that all the time in Christianity. I'm saved. I'm saved. Are you saved? That's the question, okay? But we're going to deal with if the righteous are scarce to be saved. We're going to deal with that, okay? Um, but it's customary. Um, we have to have the commandments with Christ. You just can't say I'm just going to have laws and no Christ. You just can't say I have Christ and no laws. They have to be coupled together because Christ took the laws to a high level. Understand that, okay? So let's go to the book of Isaiah, chapter 8, verse 20, and I want the Revelation, chapter 19, verse 10, to have an understanding, okay? This is the book of Isaiah, chapter 8, and verse 20. Go ahead. To the law. The Bible says to the law, okay? The law basically is compacted. In the Bible, from Genesis all the way to the Revelation, right? Read on, brother. And to the testimony. And to the testimony, not the testimony. Because you hear a lot of that stuff going on around because people give their little testimonies. But what is the testimony according to the Bible? Let's go to the book of the Revelation, chapter 19, verse 10, and we're going back to Isaiah 8 and 20. The book of Revelations, chapter 19 and verse 10. Go ahead. And I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, see thou, do it not. Mm -hmm. I am thy fellow servant. He said, I am thy fellow servant. That's what we are. We are the servants of the most high. That's how Christ came as a servant as well. Mm -hmm. Read on. And of thy brethren. And of thy brethren because the angels actually are our brethren. Okay, they kept commandments too. Understand that. Read on. That have the testimony of Jesus. The testimony of Christ, the Messiah, the King of Kings. That's what we always, we have, we call him. He, it's different titles that we call him by. But we do know he is the son of the most high, right? Mm -hmm. Read on. Worship God. Worship the most high. We call him the most high because there's no other God above him. He is the only power that we're supposed to serve. That's it. Read on, brother. For the testimony of Jesus. The testimony of the Messiah, the Christ. Read on. Is the spirit of prophecy. It's the spirit of prophecy because if you don't have the spirit of Christ on you, brothers and sisters, you would not understand this Bible in its entirety. You'd just be reading it like a novel, okay? Let's go back to Isaiah 8 and 20, and then I want Proverbs 6, 23. All right, the book of Isaiah, chapter 8 and verse 20. Go ahead. To the law mm -hmm. and to the testimony. Okay. 
if they speak not according to this word, mm -hmm. it is because there is no light in them. If they don't speak according to this word, as it is written, as it is written, okay, thus said the Lord, it says, because there is no light in them, right? So where is the light according to the Bible? Let's go to the Proverbs chapter 6, verse 23 to have a clear understanding. What is the light according to the Bible? The book of Proverbs, mm -hmm. chapter 6 and verse 23. Go ahead. For the commandment is a lamp. Okay. And the law is light. The law is light because Christ says, let your light so shine, right? So if the law is light, okay, in this context, the light is the laws in Christ. So if, 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 if darkness basically is sin, the laws in Christ helps us navigate through sin to correct us from being sinners to being righteous. Okay? If the righteous is scared to be saved. Because if you're not righteous, you won't be saved. Understand, they're saved from what, though? Okay? Read on. For the commandment is a lamp. Uh-huh. And the law is light. Right. And reproofs of instructions are the way of life. Reproofs of instructions are the way of life. Because reproof is correction, okay? I'm going to give you an example, okay? If I'm a person that, let's say I'm a person that loves to um, loves to steal. I'll use this, use this example. And I can't keep my hands off of, off of nothing. I always want to constantly keep taking things. We, well, we couple it with Christ, and we know that Christ didn't steal. So we said we filter it through Christ. And so well, Christ wasn't a thief, so I shouldn't follow being a thief, I should follow Christ. Okay? That's how you examine yourselves and you follow the Messiah because what happens, you say, okay, you look at different his, his examples. Christ didn't do this, I'm not going to do it. Christ did this, such as keep the Passover, we're going to keep the Passover. Okay? That's, what we, that's how we're supposed to follow Christ because the laws are filtered through Christ. Understand that, okay? Now, if the righteous scarcely be saved, that's the question, right? Let's go back into let's go back into um let's go to the um let's go to Exodus chapter 14 verse 13 and I want you to read already 26. And then we're going to go to Exodus 15 and 1. The book of Exodus chapter 14. And what verse you want to start at? I want you to start at 13. I want you to read the to to uh 26. All right, the book of Exodus chapter 14 and verse 13. Mm -hmm. And Moses said unto the people, mm -hmm. Fear ye not, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord. See, this is the thing. He's letting it be known, don't fear. Same way in today's time. You bring it up to today's time, we still living in biblical times. We just ain't living in ancient times. What he's saying is don't fear because you know the Lord is behind you. Okay, he's letting, he's letting us look. That's the same way today. We cannot fear what's going on in the world today. Now, I'm not saying be a fool and be a dummy and don't take heed to what's going on, but don't fear. Don't be so scared that you can't think straight. Go ahead. Which he will show to you today. Mm. For the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, <laughs> Ye shall see them again no more forever. For how long? Forever. Because that's what the Most High would do to our enemies. Okay, when we line up with Christ and keep the commandments, the Most High is going to protect us from every enemy out here, including viruses, including other people that's trying to take us down, other nations trying to take us down. The Most High will protect us from all that if we just if we stay within the Scriptures and if we stay doing what He tells us to do. Okay, read on, brother. Verse 14, the Lord shall fight for you. Who's going to fight for the you? The Lord shall fight for the you. The Lord shall fight for you because understand something. When you are righteous, okay, when you are righteous, you keep the commandments and the faith of Christ, the Lord's going to fight for you. But if you out here being wicked and not doing what the Lord tells you to do, he ain't going to fight for you. Okay, read on, brother. And he shall hold your peace. He's going to hold your what? Your peace. You're going to have peace because understand some of the work. Where the most high resides is perfect peace up there. There's no confusion going on up there. The same way there shouldn't be any confusion even in our households at all. Read on. And the Lord said unto Moses, right. Wherefore Christ thou unto me? <laughs> Go ahead. Speak unto the children of Israel. Uh-huh. 
that they go forward. He didn't say go backwards. He said go how far? Go where? Forward. We're supposed to go forward. Read on. But lift thou up thy rod uh-huh. and stretch out thine hand over the sea uh-huh. and divide it. Uh-huh. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. Through the midst of the sea. So now what's happening, and we're going to go over it tomorrow night, Lord's will. It's going to show you that the Most High is going what? He's going to deliver our nation out of captivity. That's what we're trying to do right now. That's why we simulate out the Passover because... Understand something. The Lord was doing something great. Okay? The same way he's going to do something great again. Okay, Lord's will. If we live to see that. Read on. <laughs> Verse 17. Go ahead, brother. And I, behold, uh-huh. I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians. So that's why you see these people walking around here with that pride on them. And he's, who's going to harden it? And I, uh-huh. behold, I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians. He's going to harden the heart of the Egyptians. Read on. And they shall follow them. Uh-huh. And I will get me honor upon Pharaoh uh-huh. and upon all his hosts, uh-huh. upon his chariots, uh-huh. and upon his horsemen. Because his chariots and horsemen was very great. Same way this man has war machines today. The Egyptians had their war machines with the chariots and the horsemen. That was their that was their war machine. They had a great military too. So the most high the one that's gonna take this man down. So people keep thinking, oh yeah, we're gonna do this. No, you're not doing nothing. You better keep the commandments. That's your job. Okay? Don't worry about how how you're gonna take this man. You can't do nothing. We can't even listen, tell you something. <laughs> you can't even get you a little militia going on to do nothing. So how are you talking about you going to go take somebody down? You ain't going to do that. The most high dealt with Pharaoh. Can you imagine if Moses told uh, a few Israelites, hey, look, man, we're going to take, uh, take down Pharaoh. I want you brothers to get your chairs together. We're going to go and we're going to take down Pharaoh ourselves. Not, not depending on the most high. See, that's what we have to depend on. We have to depend on the most high. Read on, brother. <laughs> read on, read on. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord. They going to know who the Lord is. When that day come, oh, that, I, I tell you one thing, they know who the Lord is now. Because the Lord is shutting everything down. Every aspect of life is being shut down right now. And, the, and people can't understand why. Read on. When I have gotten me honor upon Pharaoh, uh-huh. upon his chariots, and upon his horsemen. Go ahead. And the angel of God. Uh, the angel of who? Of God. Go ahead. Which went before the camp of Israel. The what of Israel? The camp of Israel. So you brothers keep talking about y'all don't want to be with no camp? I feel for you. Because he went before the camp of Israel. So some of y'all talking about some you camp bashers. I don't want to be a part of a camp. I tell you, one doggone thing, when that fire hit, you're going you, you, to want to be a part of the camp, for real. Right, the camp is the, the <laughs> general assembly <laughs> right. or congregation right. of Israel. Right, and that's what we keep trying to tell y'all. Stop getting caught up in this rhetoric about camps. All the camp is, basically, is an assembly, is the holy congregation of Israel. That's it. Mm-hmm. The congregation, whether it's, whether it's here, whether it's any other congregation, we are symbolizing the camp of the Lord. That's why we have to symbolize it through Christ because we keep the commandments in the faith of Christ. What is what does it say again, brother? And the angel of God, which went before the camp of Israel, uh-huh. removed and went behind them, mm-hmm. and the pillar of the cloud went from before their face and uh-huh. stood behind them. A chariot, mm-hmm. a chariot. Okay, go ahead. And it came between the camp of the Egyptians. The camp of the who? The Egyptians. They, they had their little camp. Go ahead. And the camp of Israel. Uh-huh. And it was a cloud and darkness to them. But it gave light by night to these. So that the one came not near the other all night. Uh-huh. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. Uh-huh. And the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night. Uh-huh. And made the sea dry land. Uh-huh. And the waters were divided. Go ahead. <laughs> the waters were divided. And the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea upon the dry ground. Mm-hmm. And the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand mm-hmm. 
and on their left. Could y'all imagine? That's like, let me just hit y'all with something to make y'all understand the magnitude of this. That's like saying, you see the Atlantic Ocean? That's like saying the Lord has Moses to stretch forth his rod and part the doggone Atlantic Ocean from here to Europe. And you got all the, you, you see how great the, the ocean is? You see a wall of water on each side. And Israel walks through on dry land. Through the midst of the sea. <laughs> the midst of the sea. You see whales and sharks. Like 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 you at an aquarium or something. You see all these you and you and you sitting there like, oh my, you know, it shocks you because you're like, wow. The Lord doing this for us. Because now that's like having it, that's like saying the US military behind you on hot pursuit with warplanes and everything. But but the angel of the Lord is keeping them at bay. To keep them from coming at you, Israel. That's what y'all understand. Y'all put that in the mindset of how it was back then. Because when they see when you see the Ten Commandments, they show with Charles and Hessen and all that crap. That's foolishness right there. Okay? They show crap like that just to just to sit there and, and, and make us believe that that was the so-called white man. Okay? And that's the thing. We keep telling y'all, stop believing this crap and get into your scriptures. Okay? Because that's what the that's the problem is. They love because this man has the power to take stuff like that and put it in your mind. So when you see, you think of Moses and Christ, you think of a white man. And I'm just telling you like it is. That's how they're able to trick us and make us believe that this Bible is a fairy tale. Because it's not, that's really happened, okay? They know it happened, and then they try to sit there and tell you, oh, that didn't really happen. Ah, the scientists won't tell you it never happened. It did happen, but keep reading, brother. Verse 23. Right. And the Egyptians pursued uh -huh. and went in after them to the midst of the sea. Go ahead. Even... All Pharaoh's horses. That's like that's like <laughs> that's like all of uh, Trump's uh, military. All his military coming after Israel, coming after Israel. All because they say all his horses. Because remember back then, if you had horses and you had chariots, you you had a great army back then. Mm -hmm. So it, it, you, you when you equate it to today, it's the same mindset that the Pharaoh, the true Pharaoh, right now in the, in the position that Pharaoh right now is the president. Mm -hmm. Okay, and who's hardening his heart? The Most High. <laughs> the, the thing that has been is that which shall be. Exactly. Who's hardening? Who's making him say this ain't an act of God? Because that's a, let's just be honest. They don't believe in God, y'all. They just don't. They just because you, if you notice, they talk about more science, science, scientific um, findings than they do about the Most High. You know, I mean, even with this whole pan this pandemic, it's more about science than the Most High. Not realize the Most High is the one that put plagues on Egypt. The same way he put plagues on the new Egypt. Because this place got more cases than everybody around the world, don't it? Or, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if I, my numbers could be off, but I'm just simply saying it's hey, close. Um, They asked a, a, a doctor if he had to compare um America um, to another country before it's all said and done, he said we're on the scale to um, outdo Italy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And deaths. Another Edomite country. Okay, because remember, they used to always put it on Africa all the time. Africa got all the diseases, and oh man, you know, oh man, they, they used to put it on Africa all the time. Okay, but now who's getting hit? The European nations. European nations getting hit. European people. Okay? Because y'all understand how the most high works. Okay? Go ahead. Keep reading, brother. <laughs> Verse 24. Right. And it came to pass that in the morning, the morning watch, the Lord looked unto the host of the Egyptians uh -huh. through the pillar of fire. Uh-huh. And of the cloud. And did what? And troubled the host of the Egyptians. Okay, so where y'all gods at now, you Egypt child? Where your gods at? Because if your gods were so powerful, why you can stop the God of Israel? 
Well, they're, they're trying to recuperate from them plagues. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Keep reading, brother. <laughs> and, and took off their chariot wheels mm. that they drave them heavily so that the Egyptians said, let us flee from the face of Israel. Are they saying it today to us? Heck no. Not yet. <laughs> it's coming. It's coming. Read on. <laughs> Read on. For the Lord lighteth for them against, uh, I'm sorry, fighteth for them against the Egyptians. They even understood this. Uh-oh. This is a power that we have never seen. Okay, read on. And the Lord said unto Moses, uh -huh. Stretch out thine hand over the sea. Go ahead. That the waters may come again upon the Egyptians, uh -huh. upon their chariots, and upon their horsemen. And upon their horsemen. Understand how devastating that was. How devastating that was. Jump down to verse 31. Verse 31. Uh-huh. And matter, is, fact, matter of fact, go to verse 30. Verse 30. Thus saith the Lord. No, thus the Lord saved Israel that day. Uh, saved them from what, though? Because <laughs> y'all talking about y'all saved. Saved from what? What did it say again? It's <laughs> thus the Lord saved Israel that day. Uh-huh. Out of the hand of the Egyptians. Go ahead. And Israel... Saw the Egyptians dead <laughs> upon the seashore. You don't think we're going to see that again? You don't think that's going to happen again? It's going to happen again with New Egypt. See, y'all don't understand that this is just, this is, look, this happened with the old Egypt. You, this is the New Egypt right here. Because remember, Pharaoh had much pride on him, didn't he? Pharaoh thought that he created everything. He thought everything belonged to him. Same way this man thinks everything belongs to him. But when the Most High put that spirit out there, boy, he's showing who's really in control. What did it say, brother? Go ahead. <laughs> you want to read 30 again? You can read 30 again. We're going to, then we're going straight to 31. Thus the Lord saved Israel that day mm -hmm. out of the hand of the Egyptians. Uh -huh. And Israel saw the Egyptians dead upon the seashore. <laughs> Go ahead. And Israel saw that great work which the Lord did upon the Egyptians. How, what type of work it was? The great work which the <laughs> Lord did upon the Egyptians. I thought the Lord was supposed to love everybody. Mm. He ain't had no, he ain't had no, he ain't had no love for them, did he? But he put the love. He put to be a God of love, though. Why he ain't love the Egyptians? He created them too. Didn't he create the Egyptians? Right. Yes, he did. But he had to. He, he, but they weren't his chosen, though. That's the difference. He created all these nations, but he only had one chosen. Okay. <laughs> Understand that. Go ahead. And the people feared the Lord. And the people did what? And the people feared the Lord. Better believe it. And believed the Lord. <laughs> and his servant Moses. So speak against Moses if you want to, because the Most High did this on Moses' watch. So what makes you think you're going to speak against Moses? They say they believe in the Most High and his servant Moses. Right. Right. Let me explain something to y'all. Do y'all realize that even our people saw this, but they still was rebellious? Do you realize you had a great time to do what? We believe in the Most High. We ain't never seen any of the miracles like that. That's what makes this so great because we believe that we will be delivered. And we haven't even seen it. We going by the scriptures. That's why people can't believe it. Because they said, that's just a book. But y'all got the spirit of Christ only to believe this, y'all. Because it's because it, the most important thing, read verse 31 again. What's the most important thing out that scripture? And Israel saw the great work which the Lord did upon the Egyptians. Uh-huh. And the people believed the Lord. And the people feared the oh, Lord. Oh, I'm sorry, feared the Lord. Uh -huh. and, and believed the Lord. That's the key. You have to believe. You can, how are you going to sit there and talk about, so you, you know, believing is more than just say, I believe he exists. The devils believe that. You have to fear him, too. Fear him is what? Keep the commandments, fear his judgments. That's what you have to understand. This is the, this is the key point. Okay, they believed and they feared and, and they served Moses, right? It's, Exodus, huh? It's crazy how um, <laughs> Christianity mindset works. 
yesterday we was at camp and the brother was like, um, if if I fear the Lord, how can uh, how can somebody uh, still get robbed? So his mind frame is when some wants to buy once somebody put the gun to his head, he's saying, I fear the Lord. Why is this happening to me? So the brothers that was teaching had to show him like, well, to truly fear the Lord is not just by saying that it's certain things that you have to be doing in order to really fear the Lord. Right. And you getting robbed is ultimately showing that you don't fear the Lord because what led to you being put in that situation? You out here breaking the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. You out here, um, but you got a, a, a rag around your face thinking that's going to stop the virus. But um, <laughs> you carrying yourself in a, in a way where you instead of breaking the commandments. So like when you say when you read in these scripts and it's saying they feared the Lord and believe, it's showing you that you got to have both of them. Exactly. Exactly. You just can't just say I fear the Lord and you're still doing wickedness. Right. Because you obviously don't fear him. Because you don't fear his judgments. Because if I'm out here, if I know the Lord said, okay, I don't want you doing this and you do it anyway, you don't fear the Lord. Right. What you are doing is you're playing with the Most High. And that's how the Most High smack a lot of our people because they keep saying, I love the Lord. No, you don't. Because you love him, you would do what he tell you to do. And you wouldn't do things that he hates. That's the key. It's like I always hear people analogy like that. I keep it simple. If I love somebody, would I continue to keep doing things they hate? <laughs> I mean, let's say you, 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 let's say I love you. I keep smacking, I smack you upside the head. Every day. Every day. <laughs> smack, I love you. Smack, I love you. You gonna stop and say, man, you don't love me. Right. <laughs> you hate me because you keep hitting me upside the head. That's why Tina said, what love got to do? Right, what love, yeah, exactly. What love, <laughs> I've been beat, beat her down to the ground. Oh, I love you, though. Give, I'm gonna give you a present because I love you. Right. <laughs> Come on, y'all. We're keeping it simple. Right. Come on now. If you love the Lord, keep his commandments. Mm. It's, a, it's a conditional love. You can't say the agape love, oh, I love the <laughs> Lord. The Lord loved me unconditionally. Why would he say, if you love me, keep my commandments? Why would he say that? Mm. You see, that's the problem. That's where people mess up at. Because you follow rhetoric of men right. and you don't read the scriptures for yourself. We keep telling y'all that. Now, Exodus 15 and verse 1, brother. The book of Exodus, chapter, 16, yeah. chapter 15 and verse 1. Go ahead, brother. Then sang Moses uh -huh. and the children of Israel this song Go ahead. unto the Lord and spake, saying, I will sing unto the Lord, for he hath triumphed gloriously. Go ahead. The horse and the rider mm. hath he thrown into the sea. Go ahead. Verse 2. The Lord is my strength. The Lord is what? The Lord is my strength. Same with it today. The Lord is our strength today. That's what we can't fear what's going on. If we truly believe in the most high, we got the Lord is our strength. Read on, brother. The Lord is my strength and uh, song. Uh -huh. And he has become my salvation. He's my what? My salvation. So what makes you think salvation is being delivered from your enemies and be set up in your rightful place? We're going to keep on going to that, going to the New Testament to find out if things changed. Mm -hmm. Read on. He is my God. He is my what? He is my God. He ain't said God to everybody. Because why he ain't the God of the Egyptians? Who he killed. <laughs> if he's supposed to love everybody, why he killed them? Why he didn't why he didn't say, you know what? That's why he didn't tell Israel to let's go hug the Egyptians. Hug them. You love them. No, uh, -uh no, no. Lord said you're gonna separate yourself from them. That's why we have the Passover. Mm. Okay. <laughs> Read on. And I will prepare him an inhabitation, uh, my father's God, uh -huh. and I will exalt him. He's going to do what? And I will exalt him. Go ahead, brother. Verse 3. Uh -huh. The Lord is a man of war. Are you sure it ain't love? The Lord is a man of war. Why do they keep saying <laughs> evil God, Old Testament, good God, New Testament? What do you think they always because they, they don't love judgment. It's like judgments going on in the Old Testament. They don't love that. The God, the God what, 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 what does it say? The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is a man of war. Read on. The Lord is his name. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Verse 4. Pharaoh's chariots uh -huh. and his hosts hath he cast into the sea. Go ahead. His chosen captains mm. and also are, excuse me, also are drowned in the Red Sea. Uh -huh. The depths have covered them. Uh -huh. They sank into the bottom as a stone. Hey, you know how true that is? When it, when it's stuff, it's stuff down there right now. Still pulling up stuff. Still pulling up stuff from that. That's how you know the Bible is real. That really happened. Mm -hmm. 
they still pulling things up, okay, from that great triumph, that great victory that the Most High put upon Israel. Read on. Verse 6. Thy right hand. Thy what? Thy right hand. Who sits at the right hand? Mm. What makes you think the one that sits at the right hand ain't going to do it again? My right hand, man. <laughs> <laughs> who sits at the right? So they let you know who's really doing this. It's, it's fascinating because our people still talk the same way. My right hand, man. <laughs> it be like my arm or right. my muscle. Right. The Lord, the, the most high be referring to Christ the same way. Right. My right. Exactly. Go ahead. I ain't going to handle that. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Verse 6. Thy right hand, O Lord, uh -huh. is become glorious in power. Mm. Thy right hand, O Lord, uh -huh. hath dashed in pieces the enemy. The what? The enemy. The enemy because they were our, they are our enemies. Mm -hmm. So y'all keep on talking about some of the enemy, the enemy. No, the enemy was the one that was keeping you in oppression. <laughs> right. Now realize you got enemies around you right now. Mm. Don't even realize. This is another nation, another dark-skinned nation, mm. putting another dark-skinned nation in captivity and doing what? The most I deliver us from that dark-skinned nation. Mm. That's why we keep trying to tell y'all it ain't about color. We keep telling y'all it ain't about color because the dark-skinned nation was to the Africans, which we know today is Mizrahim, from what? From Ham, mm -hmm. not the Negroes, which would be us the so-called black, so-called Hispanics, okay, is letting you know that the most high deliver us from another dark-skinned nation. So that's what we keep trying to tell y'all. The reason why we say the so-called white man because the so-called white man is in rulership right now. He controls the monetary system. He controls everything. The media, everything. So that's why we may say that because we identify who is what, who's ruling right now. How are we under oppression because we are not ruling anything. Understand that. Was that it? Okay. And in his greatness of thine excellency, thou has overthrown them. Uh, the, the greatness of his what? Excellency, uh -huh. thou has overthrown them. Uh -huh. That rose up against thee. Uh -huh. Thou sentenced forth thy wrath. Thy what? Thy wrath. Uh -huh. Which consumed them as stubble. That's the point. Because the most high is the one that does this. Okay. It's the most high that does all this. All we have to do is. Let me tell you, stay righteous. <laughs> stay righteous and keep these commandments in the faith of Christ. Follow Christ. Now I want Exodus 16 and verse 1. And I, mm -hmm, and I, you better believe it. And I want Exodus 19. Now this is the book of Exodus chapter 16 and verse 1. Go ahead. And they took their journey from Elim mm. and all the congregation of the children of Israel. Uh-huh. Came unto the wilderness of sin, Ooh -wee. which is between Elim and Sinai, uh -huh. on the fifteenth day of the second month after their departing out of the land of Egypt. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And the whole congregation of the children of Israel murmured against Moses yeah. and Aaron. Same way today in the wilderness. Now, think about this, y'all. Picture this. <laughs> We just got delivered from one of the greatest acts. The whole world has seen this. And we still complaining. We still complaining. The Lord just delivered a great delivery. And we still going back to our wicked ways. <laughs> go ahead. Let's go. Keep going. <laughs> Verse 3. Uh -huh. And the children of Israel said unto them, Go ahead. Would to God. We... <laughs> 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 Still say that to this day. Yeah. Right. Right. That's how you know it's us. That's how you know this is us right here. That's how we la look. He laughing because this is exactly how we talk today. Right. We the same way today. Same mannerism. Same mannerism. That's how you know the Israelites are us. Complaining. <laughs> oh, man, here we go. Man, God, oh, man. Why would God do this to us? Man, he got us out here to have us to die. Well, even Esau, they, they say one of their complaints about us is that we complain about everything. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> go ahead. Read, brother. Read. Would to God we had died by the hand of the Lord <laughs> in the land of Egypt. Uh-huh. 
when we sat by the flesh pots, Go ahead. and when we did eat bread mm. to the full, uh. for ye have brought us forth into this wilderness uh. to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Man, you know what, man? Shoot, man. When we was back in America, man, we was eating red. We was eating dog on McDonald's. You know what I'm saying? We eating everything, man. We eating good food. You brought us out here to this wilderness, man. Ain't even hooking us up. That's how we think. <laughs> I'm telling y'all, that's how you know we Israel. <laughs> if I eat Leviathan <laughs> one more time. <laughs> right. <laughs> but that's our people, though. We laughing, but it's the truth, man. I'm telling you. You can imagine what Moses went through. Mm -hmm. Moses was catching much hell. Because you know how you, you know how y'all do. You know exactly how we do. Man, see, Moses, who made you king, man? See, see, why don't you pray to the Lord to cook us up? And don't, don't you have a saying? Yeah. Yeah, who died and made you king? <laughs> yeah, right. yeah, yeah, man. Who made you? Who made you? Now Moses didn't ask for this though. This, this, this the king. Moses. That's why Moses is the most meekest man on the earth. Moses didn't even ask for this. The Lord saw something that Moses and chose Moses. But that's why Moses had to go to the Lord. And said, Lord, your people, they something else. <laughs> I'm paraphrasing. It. They something else. You know what I'm saying? Because we are, because let's just be honest, we hard-headed is I don't know what. A hard head make a soft behind, and we always do that. Keep reading, brother. Hey, when, <laughs> when Moses killed the Egyptian, that's what their brother said to him that next day. <laughs> Didn't he say who that? Made you, who made you king over us? You going to kill me like you going to kill me like you killed the Egyptian? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Snitches. <laughs> that's, that's, listen. That's how, that's Israel for it. That's us. I'm, I'm that's us. I'm telling you. Keep reading. <laughs> Verse 4. Go ahead. Then said the Lord unto Moses, uh -huh. Behold, I will rain bread from heaven now, for you. Here we go. Now, the Lord didn't hear this. The Lord obviously said, okay, all right. Let me just hook. Let's, let's deal with these people, our pe my people. I'm going to hook them up. They want something to eat? I'm going to give it to them. But watch how we act, though. Go ahead. And the people shall go out and gather a certain rate every day. Uh huh. That I may prove them. That he may do what? That I may prove the them. The Lord said, okay, this is what I want you to do. I want you to gather this much up. I'm going to show you. That's how, see, that's what we do. The Lord give us straight instructions, commandments. Mm -hmm. Okay, I want you to do it this way. Nah, see, I'm going to do it this way. See, the Lord said, go on this day. I'm going to go on this day. <laughs> go ahead, keep reading. Whether they will walk in my law uh -huh. or what no. What my what? My law. This is Exodus what? 16. When were the laws? When, when, when did he really give? When did, when did he Exodus talk? Exodus 20. Why is he talking about the law here? Because it already exists. Because it already exists. There you go, y'all. Law's always been present since this place, since we was created. How did Joseph know to flee from, uh, <laughs> uh, what was it, Asinine White? <laughs> right. Because he understood the law. Okay. Go ahead, get reading, bro. Verse 5. Uh -huh. And it shall come to pass uh -huh. that on the sixth day, uh -huh. the sixth day, uh -huh. they shall prepare that which they bring in, and it shall be twice as much uh -huh. as they gather daily. As they gather daily. So now you have a preparation day now. So it's letting you know that we prepare before the Sabbath. Mm -hmm. We prepare. He's prepping you for the Sabbath. Now, why is he doing this? And he hasn't even talked about the Sabbath yet. Right. It's been mm -hmm. there since the beginning. Go ahead. Keep reading. <laughs> exactly. He's, he's gradually bringing us into the scriptures, into the laws. The law's always been present. Right. It's just that we just never walked in them. Read. <laughs> and Moses and Aaron said unto the children of Israel. Go ahead. At even. At what? At even. Go ahead. Then ye shall know that the Lord hath brought you out from the land of Egypt. Go ahead. And in the morning, then ye shall see the glory of the Lord. Uh-huh. For that he heareth your murmurings <laughs> against the Lord. <laughs> Go ahead. And what are we that ye murmur against us? <laughs> <laughs> so it's said to be known, why you murmur? You see, you murmuring against. That's why we keep trying to tell y'all. Us as leaders, this teaching, we're just messengers. We just do what the Lord does say to the Lord. You don't get mad at us. See, it's y'all being wicked. How we being wicked? We going thus said the Lord. That's what Aaron is saying. Aaron said, you murmuring against us? 
There's a law. <laughs> There's a law directly related to that. It's called you cannot speak evil of the what? The gods. The gods. You can't revile the gods. <laughs> and Paul understood that. <laughs> Paul understood that real quick. Okay. That's all I wanted for that. Give me Exodus 24 and uh 24 and 12. And I want Amos 5 and 18, man. Matter of fact, no, no, I'm sorry. You know what? I'm I'm sorry. I want Exodus 19 and 1. And I want Exodus 24 and 12. Okay. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm getting ahead of myself. <laughs> the book of Exodus, chapter 19 and verse 1. Go ahead, brother. And in the third month, when the children of Israel were gone forth out of the land of Egypt, uh-huh. the same day came they into the wilderness of Sinai. Go ahead. For they were departed from Rephidim uh-huh. and were come to the desert of Sinai mm-hmm. and had pitched in the wilderness there Israel camped before the mount. Go ahead. Verse 3. And Moses went up unto God, and the Lord called unto him. Okay, what, is, what, what is this again? He did what? And the Lord called unto him. Uh, he said, and Moses went up unto what? Unto God. And who else? And the Lord. And the Lord. Called unto him. Uh-huh. Out of the mountain. Uh-huh. Saying, mm-hmm. thus shalt thou say to the house of Jacob. And tell the children of Israel. Which I understand some y'all, that's Christ. Mm-hmm. He said, God and the Lord. Mm-hmm. He said, you know, because it, Moses only dealt with Christ. He didn't really deal with the Most High directly. Right. Like some of y'all think. Okay, understand that. Go ahead. <laughs> Ye have seen what I did unto the Egyptians. <laughs> he said, so Lord, so you saw I did to the Egyptians. You saw what he did. He's giving you an example now. Go ahead. And how I bear you on the eagle's wings. On the what wings? On the eagle's wings. Uh Uh-huh. And brought you out unto my, excuse me, brought you unto myself. Go ahead. Now, therefore, if you will obey my voice indeed Mm -hmm. and keep my covenant. What's the covenant? An agreement. Mm Mm-hmm. A bond. You have to keep his covenant. Go ahead. Then ye shall be a peculiar treasure Uh unto me. Uh Uh-huh. Above all people. Above all people. Did he say? Did he say? We're going to be um, all joint heirs. Mm-mm. He said, above all people. Mm-hmm. Go ahead. For all the earth is mine, mm. and ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests mm. and a holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. Go ahead. And Moses came and called for the elders of the people uh-huh. and laid before their faces all these words <laughs> which the Lord commanded him. Go ahead. And all the people answered together. And said, all that the Lord have spoken, uh-huh. we will do. Mm-hmm. And Moses returned the words of the people unto the Lord. Oh, so that's what we did. We said, you know what? We're going to do everything the Lord told us to do. Is that right? What did the Lord give them? Exodus 24 and verse 12. You know that, Jake, because <laughs> when you're trying to get that job, they were like, you work weekends? Yep. Yeah, man, I do whatever <laughs> you want me to do. You willing to relocate? <laughs> yep. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing everything. As soon as, as soon as it's time to pay up to do your <laughs> yeah. thing. Well, see, I don't know, man. See what it was. See, see, I'm gonna tell you what's going on. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly that, that, that. We agreed to this now. Right. The covenant is an agreement. We agreed to keep the commandments. But what did he give us? Twenty-four and twelve. Mm. Exodus chapter twenty-four and twelve. And give me Amos five eighteen. The book of Exodus chapter twenty-four and verse twelve. Go ahead. And the Lord said unto Moses, uh-huh. "Come up to me in the mount uh-huh. and be there, uh-huh. and I will give thee." Tables of stone uh-huh. and a law and commandments which I have written. Who wrote them? Which I have written. The most high. So remember, we agreed. Then we agree. We agree. We agreed to do this, right? Go ahead. <laughs> that thou mayest teach them. Mm. He said, "What? That thou mayest do what? That thou mayest, mayest teach, teach them." them. So what, what he's saying is to be righteous, right? He's going to have to teach the commandments to Israel. So one thing about it is to be righteous. Let's go to the book of Psalms, chapter 119, verse 172. And I won't Deuteronomy, chapter 6, and verse 25. And then we're going to Amos 5. Remember I said you have to be righteous, right? If the righteous scares to be saved, saved from what? Give me um give me um Deuteronomy uh give me Deuteronomy six twenty five first and then I want the um one nineteen 
one nineteen. Man, let me let me read verse twenty four too. Yeah, read, read verse twenty four. Go ahead. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter six and verse twenty four. And the Lord commanded us to do all these statutes to fear the Lord our God mm. for our good always, that He might preserve us alive as it is at this day, and it shall be our righteousness. Mm. If we observe to do all these commandments before the Lord our God, as he hath commanded us. So now you were established to be righteous now, right? We established it. We said, okay, now we know what it is to be righteous. Let's, let's, let's deal with it again. The book of Psalms, chapter 119, verse 171. I mean, 172, and I want you to read down a little bit. The book of Psalms, chapter 119, and verse 172. My tongue shall speak of thy word, mm. for all thy commandments are righteousness. All thy commandments are righteousness. Go ahead. Let thine hand help me, for I have chosen thy precepts. Pro chosen thy what? Thy precepts. Precepts are laws. Go ahead. I have longed for thy salvation, mm. O Lord, and thy law is my delight. Thy law is my delight. So to be righteous, you have to do what? The laws have to be your delight. You have to enjoy keeping the commandments to be right. So you can't keep calling yourself righteous and you ain't keeping commandments. That goes against the scriptures. Okay? But the righteous scares to be saved, though. Give me the uh, book of Amos, chapter 5, verse 18. And I want Isaiah, chapter 66, and verse 15. <laughs> <laughs> the book of Amos, chapter 5, and verse 18. Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. What that saying is, y'all, is if your behind ain't right, that's how our scripture says woe. It means death and destruction. It means if you ain't got the spirit of Christ on you, because now it's gonna translate to the spirit of Christ. The first time, it was the blood on the head on the um on the doorpost, right? The Passover. This time, and we said it again, it's the spirit of Christ on you. So who woe to them that desire the day of the Lord. Go ahead. To what end is it for you? What end is it for you? Because if you're not righteous, you're not righteous keeping these commandments, your behind will get destroyed. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> the day of the Lord is darkness mm. and not light. You sure it's not, you know, us playing patty cake and and you know, and eating funnel cakes and hanging out with the Lord and you know, everybody holding hands. You sure we ain't doing all that? What, 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 is, what does it say, brother? The day of the Lord is darkness <laughs> and not light. And not light. The day of the Lord is, is darkness. darkness and not <laughs> light. But why is it going to be dark, though? Give me Isaiah chapter 66, verse 15 and 16. And I want Acts chapter 1 and verse, I mean, chapter, well, give me Acts 1 and 9 mm -hmm. after that. We're going to show y'all something because y'all y'all desire the day of the Lord, right? And he said the day of the Lord is darkness. Mm -hmm. Why would it be dark? Mm. <laughs> it's a reason why it's going to be dark that day, mm. right? Go ahead. We're going to find out why is it dark. The book of Isaiah, chapter 66 and verse 15. For, behold, the Lord will come with fire. Oh, yeah. See, he's coming. This time it was water the first time. This time he come with fire. Go ahead. And with his chariot. Like a whirlwind. Now, for some of y'all don't know what a chariot is, okay? Hold that. Give me the book of Psalms, chapter 104, verse 3, because we might have some new people on, don't know what a chariot is. Why, why is it saying chariots, right? And why is it there? Darkness. <laughs> so to go to the book of Psalms. Hold that. The book of Psalms, chapter 104, verse 3, they understand what is a chariot, okay? Go ahead. This is the book of Psalms, chapter 104 and verse 3. Go ahead, brother. Who left the beams of his chambers in the waters? Mm. Who maketh the clouds his chariot? The clouds his chariot. So when it says clouds, all the Bible is describing. Remember, the prophets are saying, they go using terminologies back then, what they see. Same with Ezekiel may say, the will within the will. So the chariot is saying, the clouds are the chariots. So when we see a, a chariot out, we see chariots, okay? Um, some of y'all may see, you may think, call them UFOs today. Well, we know, we, we can identify what they are. 
Okay. Remember in Exodus, he looked through the cloud and right. saw the host of the Egyptians. There you go. Just looking out the window. Exactly. So you understand so the, so those clouds that the Lord is coming back with is chariots, right? <laughs> and those chariots, he says it's going to come with what? Go back to Isaiah 66, verse 15 and 16. The book of Isaiah, <clears throat> chapter 66 and verse 15. Go ahead. For behold, the Lord will come with fire mm. and with his chariots like a whirlwind. And his chariots are going to come, y'all. His chariots are going to block out the sun. Okay? Swing, exactly. Swing low, sweet chariot. Those chariots is basically going to cover the whole, whole earth. You want that, Joel, too? You can go to Joel. But go ahead, though. But you can, you can get to Joel after that. Go ahead. To render his anger with fury mm. and his rebuke. With flames of fire. Hold on one second. Yeah, they get louder and louder. Hey, Shalom, can somebody please, can you please mute your mics, please? Please mute your mics. We can hear all kinds of background noise. Please mute your mics. All right, go ahead, brother. For behold, by fire uh -huh. and by his sword, uh -huh. will the Lord plead with all flesh. When Christ come back, y'all, he's not playing no games. Christ is bringing judgment because he's angry because he's, he's the right hand of the Most High. That's who the Most High is using to bring judgment. Because why? Because this earth is wicked as I don't know what. A lot of things are happening. Every time you turn around, it's always wickedness going on constantly. Go ahead. And the slain of the Lord shall be many. The slain of the Lord shall be many. He's not coming back to play games. Go ahead. <laughs> exactly. You're going to be slain, all right. <laughs> it won't be the spirit. I tell you that. Your spirit make it slain. If your butt ain't right, go ahead. Verse 17. They that sanctify themselves uh -huh. and purify themselves uh -huh. in the gardens behind one tree. In the gardens, some of these churches. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's what y'all been doing, going to these churches, learning falsehoods, and doing what? And following false idolatry and following false images of Christ, too. Go ahead. Behind behind one tree uh -huh. in the mist, eating swine's flesh. Eating what? Swine's flesh. Eating swine's flesh. And the abomination mm. and the mouse shall be consumed together. Uh, and do say, what? Say and, the Lord. And get consumed together, which means you get put to death. Because what's happening, a lot of people eat these abominable foods. That's why we have this pandemic going on, too. Because somebody decided they want to eat something abominable, the most high hates, and therefore, that's why we have these things going on today. Because it brought forth a plague. Because why? Because we kept telling y'all, practice what the Most High says, eat clean foods. Oh, nah. Now we can eat anything. Okay. All right. Now you got this. Now everybody walking around with masks going scared. Because nobody want to take heed. Right. Nobody want to listen. We kept saying, stop eating abominable foods. Nah, and the mouse, and the mouse, you know what the mouse represents too? The mouse represents possums and stuff. Because some of y'all be eating, that's a mouse. That's a big old rat eating squirrels and stuff like that. Those are, those things, you eat those things that's abominable to the most high. Stop eating them things and that stuff won't happen to us. We keep telling y'all that. The real CDC is in the scriptures right here. It tells you exactly how to avoid uh, diseases. But because we be disobedient, that's why these things are kidding us all the time. Okay. <laughs> All right. You say you want Joel? Yeah, back to these clouds. This is the book of Joel, chapter 2 and verse 1. Go ahead. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion. And you know what? That's what we're supposed to do for the Passover. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion. Go ahead. And sound an alarm in my holy mountain. Uh huh. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, mm -hmm. for the day of the Lord cometh, mm. for it is nigh at hand. Uh -huh. A day of darkness, <laughs> day <laughs> of darkness and of gloominess. Uh -huh. A day of clouds. Of chariots, because what's going to happen, y'all, what that's showing y'all is, what the prophecies with Joel is saying, is when that day of the Lord comes, the whole earth going to be covered with chariots. What you call UFOs, okay? Could you read the first part of that again? Uh huh. Verse two: A day of darkness and of gloominess. Mm. Verse one. Oh, verse one. Mm -hmm. Blow ye the trumpet in Zion, mm -hmm. and sound an alarm in my unholy mountain. Right. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, mm. 
for the day of the Lord cometh, for it is nigh at hand. You're in the Old Testament, right? <laughs> Joel saying the day is nigh. Your time frame and Lord time frame is not the same thing. All uh, the prophets of the Most High have always been warning their people to get ready. That's why the Lord said, man, the day of the Lord going to sneak up on y'all like a thief in the night. Because y'all keep thinking y'all got time. Mm -hmm. Yes, you do. And like you said, the prophets have always been warning the people. Notice it says, blow ye the trumpet in Zion. Mm -hmm. Not in Edom. <laughs> not in China. In Zion. Mm -hmm. Blow it for our people. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And you know something? The trumpet, what's the trumpet today? <laughs> Give me Isaiah <laughs> chapter 58 and verse 1. What y'all think we doing? We blowing a trumpet today. Mm -hmm. Tell y'all got to get right because the new Passover is coming. Mm -hmm. And you better ask yourself a serious question. Will you be ready on that day? <laughs> you better get ready. You understand that? <laughs> <laughs> the book of Isaiah chapter 58 and verse 1. Because y'all always wonder why y'all always coming off so hard like y'all come off. Why y'all always yelling all the time? So the Lord, this, this scripture right here defines why we do what we do. Okay? Read. We, we, we're doing, we're blowing the trumpet, right? Right. Read. Cry aloud. Do what? Cry aloud. The Bible says cry aloud, which means to teach. Mm -hmm. Teach with authority, too. I'm talking about teach with some bass in your voice and let everybody know what's coming. Read. Spare not. And do what? Spare we not. We ain't sparing nobody's feelings. This ain't the time to play games. And time us, oh, I don't hurt your feelings. No. The Lord is bringing destruction to this place. You better bring the fire. Read. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet. Like a what? Like a trumpet. Not like a little pansy. Oh, you know what? Let's lift up our voices. No, you better have some bass in your doggone voice because we sound an alarm. Right. It's coming. Read. <laughs> and show my people. Well, whose people? My people. He didn't say show everybody. He said show my people who are the children of Israel, which you so-called blacks mm. and so-called Hispanics, whose fathers are Negro and innocent. That's why we go to the streets and teach this word the way we teach it. We don't teach this word to sit there and play games. Because right now, destruction is at hand. Right. We ain't got time to play no games. Time is ticking. Read. And the house of Jacob, their sins. Their sins. So we have to tell you, brother, sister, you're out of order. Get yourself in order. Or else the Lord going to bring that death angel upon you. That's why we do what we do because we love our nation. We're not out there just, you think we're going to put ourselves at risk? Just to play games with y'all? We're putting ourselves a root to tell you what's coming to this earth. Give me something else in chapter 15, verse 1, brother. People scared to breathe outside. And yeah. We out there just yelling. Yeah. <laughs> at the top of our lungs. Repent. Repent. <laughs> <laughs> Get yourself together, brother. Oh, man. No, no, I'm not trying to hear that. But soon as that man come on TV and say, I want y'all to do this for the coronavirus. I want y'all to do that. You follow exactly what he tell you to do. I couldn't tell you how many people I seen yesterday pull their mask down to, right. pull, to pull from their cigarette. So, <laughs> but, but let's just be, uh, no, 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 I, I'm, I'm going to keep it real. Let's just keep it real. These people tell you to do certain things. You follow exactly what they tell you to do. Stand six feet behind people. Don't do this. <laughs> don't do that. Okay, all right. I'm going to do exactly what he tells us to do. We tell you, keep the commandments. I oh, man, ain't trying to hear that. This is what God say. But soon that man tell you to do something, you know what, we're going to have social distancing. Mm. We're going to do this, go do that. Mm. Who do you really fear? Mm. Ask yourself that question. Who do you really fear? i tell you who we fear. Because I'm going to tell you all straight, if the most high get, wants to get that, we're going to get it. I mean, I would hate for us not to get it. Right. But I'm just telling y'all, you do only good, all you can do is the best you can do, y'all. Keep your hands clean. You're supposed to do that anyway. You're supposed to have clean hands anyway. You're right. supposed to be sanitary anyway. Right. You're supposed to wash yourself anyway. Right. You're supposed to disinfect anyway. Disinfect with these scriptures. Mm. That's what you need to disinfect, though. Because we get so wrapped up in all this stuff to go on in the world, we got to go right to this. Mm. 
and understand how we get out of this situation with this. Okay, I'm not saying don't, I'm not saying don't listen and don't take heed. But what I'm saying is y'all have the same diligence in the scriptures. Right. Have that same get up and go with the scriptures. Have that same diligence. Have that same energy. For some of y'all, y'all like to say that. Have that same energy. Have that same energy with the most high. <laughs> y'all love to say that, right? right. You love to use that word. Okay. Seriously. I mean, I'm just, we, I'm, I'm, I'm joking, but I'm yeah. not joking. Yeah. I'm just being honest. We have to say have that same mentality. The Lord said, do this. We're supposed to be, be like this. Okay, Lord. A lot of people get lazy. All right, Lord. Let, all right. So you want me to do this? Do this? Because we, some of y'all, okay, he said, make sure social distancing. We be, I be, sometimes I be in the store. I see people, man, they be like, make sure you stand back. <laughs> okay, all right, all right. I'm going to stand back. All right, okay. <laughs> but soon the commandments come out, man. I ain't even trying to hear that. Right. Oh, please, man, you know, the Lord said the real social distance is, is keep yourself from the way of the nations. <laughs> Be ye separate. <laughs> How about that social distancy there? Right. Try that. <laughs> okay? <laughs> no, but y'all are separatists. But y'all are separatists, too. Y'all told me to stay six feet away. Y'all separated me, too. Right. What about that? <laughs> social distancy. The Lord said, keep the Lord said, I want you to separate yourselves. Right. From sin. How about that? Go get my armor. You better believe it. Now, you don't want to hear that. Now, now look. See, dang, the Lord wants to love. Hold, uh, you ain't holding hands now. Hold hands now. Hold hands if you want to now. <laughs> <laughs> Bet you won't hold. Put your hands on. Try to put your hands on somebody to, to take the spirit off of them if you want to. You want to lay hands on somebody? <laughs> <laughs> see, see, see that's, what, that's all I'm saying, y'all. We get so wrapped up in the wrong thing. Not realizing the answer right here. You seen Kenneth <laughs> Copeland, man? This man stuck his hand in like some water and put it to the TV and was like, I'm going to pray that coronavirus away. <laughs> he was like, put your hand up to the TV. Hand uh, dripping wet. <laughs> he, 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 must ain't hear, he must ain't read John 931. <laughs> the Lord don't hear sinners, right. sir. <laughs> you can put your hands in some water all you want. The most I ain't trying to hear that crap. Okay. Give me Second Ezra chapter 15, verse 1, brother. Verse 1? Yeah. The book of Second Ezra, chapter 15 and verse 1. No, Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people. My, uh, my, here we go again. My people, he's being very specific. My people, like if you got your shoes, you got your shoes. He ain't said get, those, get the other shoes. He said get those shoes, those people, right? Read mm -hmm. on. The words of my prophecy. The word of my prophecy. Read on. Which I will put in thy mouth, ah. saith the Lord. Same way he's saying cry aloud, the same thing telling Ezra to go do. Mm -hmm. Same thing you see these Israelites out there teaching. Same thing he tell us to go do. Read on, brother. And cause them to be written in paper. And what? In paper. That's why you have the Bible. Because he said, I caused them to be written in paper. The most I gave them instruction to do what? To do this mm -hmm. in paper. The same way we have the Bible today, that's the same thing what Ezra's did. Okay, read mm -hmm. on. For they are faithful. They are what? They are faithful. The scriptures are faithful. Read. And true. And true. Read on. Fear not the imaginations against thee. Uh -huh. Let not the, in, the in, indulity uh -huh. of them trouble, uh -huh. them trouble thee. Speak against thee. Go ahead. Verse 4. For all the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness. That's judgment. All the unfaithful that's not keeping commandments is going to die in the unfaithfulness. Read. Num verse 5. Right. Behold, saith the Lord, uh -huh. I will bring plagues upon the world. Bring what I will bring what upon the world? I will bring plagues upon the world. That's why I have plagues today. Read on. The sword, mm. the famine, mm. death, mm -hmm. and destruction. Uh, it's coming. For wickedness hath exceedingly polluted the whole earth. Because you can't go nowhere without wickedness being exceeding the whole earth. The Israelites aren't ruling right now. And not keep and we and right now what we're doing, we're getting caught up with the other nations. That's why we're getting caught up in all the nonsense. Read on, brother. And their hurtful works are fulfilled. Uh-huh. Verse 7. Go ahead. Saith the Lord. Uh -huh. I will hold my tongue. I will hold my tongue no more. Uh-huh. As touching their wickedness. Oh, he, oh, he the most high as I hold his tongue no more as touching their wickedness, because guess what he's doing? He got various brothers out there teaching his word. Hmm. Putting their lives on the line, whether it's this organization or, or other organizations out there teaching his word and spirit and the truth and pushing his truth to the apocalypse. Mm -hmm. He won't hold his tongue no more by using his prophets, using his brothers out there teaching his word. 
Read on, brother. Which they have uh, profanely committed. Uh -huh. Neither will I suffer them in those things. He won't allow them in those things. Read on. In which they wickedly exercise themselves. Uh -huh. Behold, the innocent and righteousness, excuse me, and righteous and blood. righteous blood, righteousness, keep the commandments. Read on. Blood crieth unto me, uh -huh. and the souls of the just complain continually. Oh, Lord, please deliver us from this captivity. Lord, please get us out this nonsense. Lord, give us our salvation. Give us our land. Give us our language. Give us the kingdom, Lord. Read on. Verse 9. Uh -huh. And therefore, says the Lord, Go ahead. I will surely avenge oh, them. Oh, you better believe he's going to avenge all the righteous Israelites. Read on. And receive unto me all the innocent blood uh -huh. from among them. Go ahead. Behold, my people is led as a flock to the slaughter. You see it right now. Go ahead. I will not suffer them, no. Excuse me. I will suffer them now to dwell in the land of Egypt. This, this is the new Egypt. Because Egypt was destroyed at the time of Ezra. <laughs> understand that. Go ahead. But I will bring them with a mighty hand. A mighty what? A mighty hand. Go ahead. And they stretched out arm. And do what? And I will smite Egypt with plagues. As before. Mm. That's how you know this ain't the old Egypt. Read on. And will de and destroy all the land thereof. Go ahead. Egypt shall mourn. Aren't they mourning today? Mm. Every time I turn around, oh my God, they're crying. Read on. And the foundation of it shall be smitten with the plague. And punishment that God shall bring upon it. Who gonna bring upon it? God shall bring upon you it. Sure it ain't five G. That God shall bring you upon sure it. Ain't the government doing it. That God shall bring upon <laughs> it. That God gonna bring upon it. Read on, brother. That they will. That that. Excuse me. They that till the ground uh -huh. shall mourn. They that till the ground mean people with their professions, mm. people that do what that they got to go to work. They mourn because they don't have that because they got to go get unemployment. They they just suffering. They that till the ground shall mourn. Okay, read on, brother. Man, um, <laughs> brother Jake seen the video yesterday. The farmers crying. Uh -huh. yep. Farmers are crying because they begging the America to let the Mexicans in so they can uh, pick crops from the farm. Because one dude was like, if the Mexicans don't come help us, they're going to lose a, billion, uh, a million dollars in blueberries. But I thought they want the Mexicans, they, they want to keep the Mexicans out, though. <laughs> they want them to come I in now. They, I thought they want to keep them out, though. <laughs> right. Build a wall now. Where your wall at now? Build your wall now. Where your wall at? That man said, please, help please us. Please, help <laughs> us. Yeah, but I thought you want the wall, though. There, there might be a famine because of this. <laughs> oh, but keep, keep reading. It's going to get better. Keep reading. Egypt shall mourn, uh -huh. and the foundations of it shall be smitten with the plagues. Go ahead. And the punishment that God shall bring upon it, uh -huh. that they, they that till the ground uh -huh. shall mourn, uh -huh. for their seeds shall fail through All the blasting. All the professions going to fall through. That's why they can't go to work. 13. We're in verse 13. All your seeds, because remember, during this time, that was their profession. They were farmers. All your seed, all the things that you put your faith in, read on. Shall fail through the blasting of in hell uh -huh. and with the fearful constellation. Go ahead. Verse. Go ahead. You know, what's funny is you got all these different professions, but now everything is back to the basic things that you need to survive. Exactly. Exactly. Food. Toilet paper, which y'all want to go stock up on. Everybody want, everybody want a bottle now. Read on. Go ahead, brother. Verse fourteen. Go Woe to the world. Woe to the what? To the world. Uh huh. And them that dwell therein. That you want to be in the world? You want to go out here and be lining with the world? That's the destruction to you. That's what the Bible says. Read on, brother. For the sword. And their destruction draweth nigh. Uh -huh. And one people shall stand up to fight against another. Uh -huh. And the sword in their hand. Oh, it's coming. Verse 16. Go ahead. For there shall be a sedition among men. What is sedition? Uprisings. Mm -hmm. Sedition. You starting to see it today. Well, it started with the gun rally stuff. It started with the gun rally stuff. With the militias. It started with them. It's going to keep on starting. Why do you think people are going to buy all these guns and ammunition? It's for uprising. They know what they're doing. Read on. We just don't know. And Read. invading one another, they shall not regard their kings nor prince. <laughs> they don't care about the king. They don't care about the politicians. They don't care about the, the, the higher ups. They don't care about what they say. Okay. Read on. And the course of their action shall stand in their power. Go ahead. A man shall desire to go into a city. He can't go into the city. Can write it. Don't they have border cities now? You can't go into the city. 
A, a man should do what? And a man shall desire to go into a city. Go ahead. And shall not be able. He ain't going to be able to go. You can't go to New York. You come from New York, he, they might arrest you behind now. They might think you affected. They might think you become a, you know, you may become a case. They say anybody that come traveling that come from New York, uh -huh. wherever you go, you got to self-quarantine 14 days for yep. you allowed to move about in the exactly. city. Exactly. Go ahead, keep reading. Keep reading. For a man shall desire to go into a city go ahead. and shall not be able. Go ahead. For because of their pride. Because of their what? Because of their pride. Uh -huh. The city shall be troubled. Uh, same way. Who had pride? Egypt. Egypt. Esau, Egypt. Yeah, yeah. Esau, Esau got it. Big pride. Go ahead. For because of their pride, the city shall be troubled. Uh -huh. The houses shall be destroyed. Uh -huh. And men shall be afraid. People scared to death. They can't even leave their house. Oh, my God. I don't know, man. I saw this saw this one video. This brother uh -huh. is sitting there, and he's like, he had his gun. And he's like, I'm at home on quarantine. If you come knock on my door, I'm going to shoot through the door. See? See? Go ahead. A man shall have no pity upon his neighbor. You are you seeing it today? Nobody have no pity on you? <laughs> nobody nobody can care less. You, you, need, some, you need some treatment? You, 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 have to, you, you want a test? Oh no no you 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 you're not priority. A man shall have no pity on his neighbor. Read on. But shall destroy their houses uh, with the sword uh, and spoil their goods uh -huh. because of the lack of bread. The lack of what? Of bread. Uh huh. For and for great tribulation. Because now you see the shelves, the shelves in these stores are being emptied because of the lack of bread. That's why these things are happening because these are the beginning of sorrows. The party just getting started. Mm. Read on. Verse 20. Uh -huh. Behold, said God, uh -huh. I will call together all the kings of the earth uh -huh. to reverence me, uh -huh. which are from the rising of the sun, Go ahead. from the south, uh -huh. from the east, uh -huh. and from the, the Lebanon. And what the Lord going to do? And, and turn themselves one against another. Oh, he's going to put the spirit to turn them against each other. All these great generals and all these people that you see you reverence, he's going to turn them against each other. Read on. And repay the things that they have done to them. Now, he's going to repay because payback is best served cold or hot with the done of destruction. Read. Verse 21. Uh -huh. Like as they do yet this day until my chosen. Like you did to the chosen, which you so-called black, so-called Hispanics. Then like you did to the chosen. Read on. So will I do also in recompense in their bosom. Mm -hmm. Thus said the Lord God. Go ahead. My right hand. My what? My hand? right hand. Oh, you better believe your Jesus is coming to do what he's going to do. Read on. Shall not spare the sinners. He's going to spare. You want to keep, you want to break commandments? He won't spare the sinners. Read. And my sword shall not cease over them that shed innocent blood. They shed innocent blood. Read. Upon the earth. Uh huh. Verse 23. Uh -huh. The fire. The what? The fire. The same way the Lord will come in Isaiah 6, 6, verse 15. He said, The fire. Read on. It's gone forth from the, his wrath. Uh huh. And hath consumed the foundations of the earth. Uh huh. And the sinners like the straw that is kindled. It's because you, you keep on telling people don't keep commandments. Because you're going to get caught up in the destruction. Verse 24. Woe to them that sin. Woe to what? Woe to them that sin. Death and destruction to them that willfully break the commandments. Read. And keep not my commandments. And keep not the commandments. Read. Saith the Lord. Uh -huh. I will not spare them. He ain't going to do what? I will not spare the Lord them. I ain't going to spare you. Because when he called, you didn't answer. Mm. When he knocked, you didn't open the door. You thought it was a joke. Now, y'all ain't joking now, are you? You want to wear masks, hand sanitizer. We told y'all, keep the commandments. Do it the right way. No, nah, that's just y'all interpretation. That's your exegesis. Read. Go your way, uh -huh. ye children, from the power. Defile not my sanctuary. Go ahead. For the Lord knoweth all that sin. Excuse me. The Lord know of all them that sin against him. Go ahead. And therefore delivered he them unto death and destruction. Unto death and destruction. Verse 27 is what I want. Brother. For now are the plagues come upon the whole earth. Now the what? Because the, this is global now. This is global of the whole earth. It ain't just over here. It's over there. It started on the east of him. It's free and it headed up over here. What do you say again, brother? For now are the plagues come upon the whole earth. Go ahead. And ye shall remain in them. In them. For God shall not deliver you because Be ye have sinned against him. Because you have sinned against the most high. 
That's why he won't deliver us if we don't keep these commandments, y'all. These commandments is life. We telling y'all, we giving you a warning. If the righteous scares to be saved, if we the ones that's keeping commandments gonna have a hard time getting saved out this nonsense, what make you think the ungodly gonna get out of here? I'm telling y'all, we better get ourselves together. I'm telling you this because it's for the love of the most high. I'm telling you, okay? <laughs> Give me the Matthew, chapter 24 and verse 27, brother. All right, the book of St. Matthew, chapter 24 and verse 27. Mm -hmm. For as the lightning cometh out of the east mm -hmm. and shineth even unto the west. When Christ come back, y'all, it's going to be quick. This place is going to get destroyed in one hour. He's going to make short work of this place. Read. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. So the coming of the Son of Man be. Jump to verse 29, brother. Verse 29. Immediately after the tribulation of those days uh -huh. shall the sun be darkened, mm. and the moon shall not give her light. When it says the moon and the sun, it's talking about the wisdom. This man's technology is going to get shut out, shut down. His satellites are going to get shut down. The same way the most High shut everything down on, on the ground, he's going to shut down everything down up in space. Read. The stars shall fall from heaven. The stars going to fall from heaven. The satellites that you see going to fall. The governments that you see going to fall. Read. And the powers of heaven shall be shaken. The powers of heaven, all the governments going to be shaken, going to get destroyed. Because when Christ come back, he's going to have many crowns. <laughs> Believe that. Read on. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man mm. in heaven. Uh. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. Well, you better believe that. Some people are going to be crying, oh, Lord, he exists. Oh, my God. You, you tell me he ain't white? Oh, my God. What have we have done? <laughs> okay. Go ahead, you done, brother. You done touched the apple of his eye. You better believe that. Go ahead. And they shall see the Son of Man coming. Everybody going, every eye going to see Christ. Even the ones that's in the ground going to see Christ. Everybody going to see Christ. Physically see Christ. Not spiritually. Physically see him. Read. In the clouds of heaven. Oh, the clouds. does those clouds again. Uh-huh. Chariots. Read. With power and great glory. Shh. Is that it? Uh, how far you want me to go? Can we <laughs> read the next one? I can read the next one. <laughs> go ahead. And he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet. The great sound of a trumpet. And they shall gather together. The what? His elect. His elect. Who's the elect? We want Isaiah 45 and verse 4. Keep reading. It says he's going to gather his elect. Was that it? Gather his elect from the four winds. From one end of heaven uh, to the other. Aren't we scattered on the four corners of the earth? Israel is scattered on the four corners of the earth. With his chariots, he's going to gather who is his elect. Who is his elect? Isaiah 45, verse 4. And I'm on 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 17. The book of Isaiah, chapter 45 and verse 4. Go ahead. For Jacob, my servant's sake. We are the servants of the Most High. Read on. And Israel, mine elect. Who's his elect? And Israel, mine elect. So, so much for all nations. Because Christ just said he's going to gather the elect from the four winds of the earth. So, precept must be upon precept. The elect is Israel. Understand that, brothers and sisters. But give me the book of 1 Peter, chapter 4, verse 17 to 19. And I want Zechariah 13, and verse 8. The book of First Peter, chapter 4 and verse 17. Go ahead. For the time has come uh -huh. that judgment must begin at the house of God. Judgment going to come to us first. The Israelites who know better. The Israelites who basically understand to keep the commandments, how we're supposed to handle things. Judgment going to hit us first. I pray, brothers and sisters, that we're all right, myself included. I'm not exempt. I pray, Lord, have mercy on all of our souls on that day. Read. And if it first begin at us, <laughs> Go ahead. what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? So if it begins at us, who's trying to keep the commandments, who's doing the best we can do, it begins at us, and the ones who reject this, who don't want to do it, keep reading. 
<laughs> and if the righteous <laughs> scarcely be saved. The righteous, the brothers and sisters, who's in this truth, keeping commandments, trying to get it right, scarcely be saved, which means barely by the skin of your teeth. Man. If we going to barely get it, read. Where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? That's the ones who reject it. The ones who only keep commandments, the one, them, the ones. Hey, if we're going, if we're going to have a hard time making the cut, what you think will happen to y'all? They don't want to keep commandments. We. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Wherefore, let them suffer according to the will of God. <laughs> Commit the keeping of their souls to Him in well doing, as unto a faithful Creator. Mm -hmm. That's what y'all never understand, okay? If the righteous scares to be saved, how are we going to be saved? <laughs> how are we going to be saved? He said they're obeying the gospel, right? What's the right. gospel? Luke. Let's go to Luke 1. He said scares to be saved, right? Mm -hmm. Then I want to look at Rod 13 and 8. Mm -hmm. He said if the righteous scares it, barely will I, the skin of our teeth make it. Saved from what, though? And how are we going to be saved? <laughs> See, I don't think y'all know what's coming to the earth, y'all. Right. I think y'all don't understand <laughs> what's coming to the earth. I think y'all think it's going to be a game. But it ain't a game. Understand that. We tell them, we want we warn our people, get ourselves right. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, brother. That's what it means to repent. All right, the book of St. Luke, chapter 1 and verse 68. Go ahead. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. This New Testament, right? Right. Why he ain't saying everybody? He still saying the God of Israel still, right? Read. For he, oh, hold on. Matter of fact, <laughs> let me read up one verse. Go ahead, bro. And his father, Zechariah, was filled with the Holy Ghost. Which means, what's the Holy Ghost? <laughs> the understanding of Christ and keep the commandments. Right. Okay. <laughs> 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 oh, the old. So the Holy Ghost didn't impregnate him, right? But impregnated Mary, though. <laughs> but the Holy Ghost was in him, though. Mm -hmm. Filled with the Holy Ghost. Go ahead, bro. And prophesied, uh -huh. saying, uh -huh. "Blessed be the Lord God of Israel." Go ahead. For He have visited and redeemed His, his people. people. Visited and redeemed His. People, he still called Israel his people in the New Testament. Mm -hmm. Okay, read on. And have raised up an horn of salvation. A horn is a king. Mm -hmm. A horn is a king. In this context, the king is who? Christ. Read. For us in the house of his servant David, huh. as he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets. Like Ezra. Mm -hmm. He spoke about all these different prophets. It was always prophesied like Moses about Christ was coming. Read on. Which have been since the world began. Go ahead. That we should be saved from our enemies. Saved from our what? From our enemies. That's who you're being saved from. From your enemies because these nations hate us. Go ahead. And from the hand of all that hate him. Mm. <laughs> that hate him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. To perform the mercy of promise to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, covenant agreement like we had a covenant back then i showed you the covenant yep. back then it was a we agree it's an agreement read the oath which he swear to our father abraham uh -huh. that he would grant unto us uh -huh. that we being delivered out of the hand of our enemies mm. Might serve him without fear. Without fear. Are we serving him without fear right no. now? No. Same thing in Egypt. Right. <laughs> you let my people go that they may come and serve exactly. me. Exactly. Verse 75. <laughs> in holiness and righteousness mm -hmm. before him all the days of our life. All the days of our life. And, and thou, child, shalt be called the prophet of the highest. Uh-huh. Thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways, to give knowledge of salvation mm -hmm. unto his 
people by the remission of their their sins. sins. And that's the point, y'all. If the righteous scares to be saved, to be saved, y'all, that's the gospel. The gospel is the good news that Israel is going to be saved from our enemies. Time and time again, the Most High has, has saved us from our enemies because the last enemy we want to be saved from is death. You know, that's what we have to understand, y'all, and that's what we keep trying to tell our people. Beginning of Zechariah, chapter 13, verse 8, and we're going to go to Jeremiah, chapter 16, verse 14. The book of Zechariah, <laughs> chapter 13, and verse 8. Go ahead, brother. And it shall come to pass. That in all the land, saith the Lord, mm-hmm. two parts therein shall be cut off. Let me tell y'all something. Two parts of Israel is going to die. Two-thirds of our people are going to die. I pray that none of us is in the midst of that because we don't know. We pray that we're not in the midst. Of, we pray the most high mercy upon our souls. I really want to. I pray for all Israel, to be honest with you. I don't want to see nobody caught up in this two-thirds. We don't know who the two-thirds are. Some people keep saying, I know the two-thirds. No, you don't. No, you don't. You better pray. You're not, you're not a part of the two-thirds. No one knows that. So two-thirds will get cut off and die. Read on. Save the Lord. Two parts therein shall be cut off and die. Uh-huh. But the third shall be left therein. Go ahead. And I will bring the third part through the fire mm. and will refine them as silver Which is refined. Means, y'all, we have to go through the thermal nuclear destruction. We have to go through that. The same way we the same way our foreparents went through the water to get salvation, to get saved from our enemies. In the, <laughs> in the midst of the sea. Right. In the same way, we're gonna think we're gonna die. Do you think about think, think about that for a second. Understand that. To go through the fire, something has to happen to you though. Keep reading, like a rod, and I want First Corinthians fifteen, and we'll try them as gold is tried. Try them as gold is tried, which means you got you had to go through the fire, buddy. Go ahead. They shall call on my name. Oh yeah, you gonna know the name there. You gonna know the name. <laughs> oh, go ahead. And I will hear them, and I will say, uh-huh. "It is my people," uh-huh. and they shall say, "The Lord is my God." That's what you want. We're fighting for the opportunity. To get ourselves lined up with Christ. That's why we that's why we do this, y'all. That's why we in this. Mm. We're not in this just to play games. Right. <laughs> we we put our lives on the line because we want the kingdom. We want to be able to be joint heirs with Christ. That's all we're doing, we're doing. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse 50. You don't, you don't want Jeremiah 16? No, I don't want that yet. I want First Corinthians 15, 50 to 53 first. Then I want Jeremiah chapter okay. 16, verse 14. And this is no? Huh? Right. Right. That's the point. Where your faith? Your, where your faith at? Where your faith gonna be at? You can't get to the, <laughs> Man. the book of uh, First Corinthians, chapter fifteen, and verse because 50. how are you gonna be able to go through the fire? Because we told y'all, y'all think we crazy. How are you going through that fire? What must happen for you to go through that fire? Because this body right here can't even handle when it gets hot outside and humid outside. <laughs> we can't even handle home man. It's hot as on no way. When that thermal nuclear destruction happens, it's gonna be a lot hotter than that. So how your body gonna be able to stand up today? First Corinthians chapter fifteen, yes. verse 50, 50 through fifty three. The brother. book First Corinthians chapter fifteen <laughs> and verse fifty. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom. This of- flesh here gotta go to the ground. This 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 is not gonna be able to make it, y'all. Go ahead. Neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. How can this corrupted body inherit incorruption? We're prone to sin. That's why, that's why David said what he said. We are shaped in iniquity. We have a sinful nature. We have to shake that. Okay, read on. Behold, I show you a mystery. He show you a mystery. Go ahead. We shall not all sleep. Some but- of us ain't going to die. When that glorious day happens, <laughs> let me tell you all something. Some of us. Ain't gonna know what it is to die. Think about that. Oh my goodness. Read on. But we shall all be changed. They ain't gotta be changed now because to go through that fire, you cannot go through that fire with this body. You what your this body can't take it. You'll burn up. Go ahead. 
We shall all be changed. Oh, we all going to be changed. Go to Lord's will. <laughs> yeah. Lord's will. If it be the Lord's will. If it be will. the Lord's will. Go ahead. In a moment. In a moment. Go ahead. In the twinkling of an eye. That's how quick it's going to happen. So quick. Because remember, when that happens, think about this. Your faith is going to be strong that day. Because the twinkling of an eye. You see that fire coming to you. Oh, Lord. <laughs> Change up. Oh, my God. I got out of it. Think about that. I'm just picturing this in my mind, how, it, how, it, how, it, how, it, how it's going to end up. Read on. At the last Trump. At the last Trump. The la and we talking about Donald Trump. <laughs> the last Trump. <laughs> that on. would be nice, though. <laughs> <laughs> we never know. Hey, listen, I'm going to tell you all this. It's funny because uh, uh, the Deacon the Thon made a – yeah, we was talking uh, yesterday – he said, man, wouldn't it be something that the real Passover happened this Passover? Because mm. plagues are hitting Egypt, ain't it? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> we just may happen, y'all. We don't know. That mean we ain't got to pay rent, cuz. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ain't going to be nothing to pay, too. Everything going to be burnt up. <laughs> Go ahead, brother. For the trumpet shall sound, oh. and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, Ooh -wee. And, and we shall be changed. Mm. For this corruptible must put on incorruption. You have to put on incorruption. That's the only way you get into the fire. The same thing we said about the back back in the day, when we had to have the blood, this time you had to hear the spirit of Christ only to be changed. If you don't have the spirit of Christ on you, you're not going to get changed. You're just going to get burnt up. So we have to have the spirit of Christ on us to be changed, to go through that fire, to be have the new Passover. Go ahead. And this mortal must put on immortality. Think about that. Put on you have your glorious body, which I pray we get, because I'm feeling all kinds of aches and pains. <laughs> Lord, have mercy. We need it now. <laughs> you better believe that. <laughs> Jeremiah, chapter 16, verse 14 and 15, brother. The book of Jeremiah, <laughs> chapter 16 and verse 14. Go ahead. Therefore, behold, the days come. Saith the Lord, uh -huh. that it shall no more be said, uh -huh. the Lord liveth, that brought up the children of Israel <laughs> out of the land of Egypt. Let me tell y'all something. This new Passover is going to be so spectacular that we ain't going to remember the old Passover. We, we gonna, we're going to remember this one. That's what he's saying. He's saying it's going to come a time after the new Passover that we're not going to even remember the old Passover. Go to go, go, read on. <laughs> but your but your Christians don't want to keep Passover. Oh yeah. They were they were all you know. <laughs> he ain't say Easter. He said he let it be known delivered from Egypt. Right. Go ahead. What you gonna do East egg hunt in the house this year? <laughs> Verse fifteen. Uh -huh. But the Lord liveth that brought it brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north. Mm. The and land of the what? The land of the north. That's how you know it's talking about North America. Because that's, like, that's going to be a great deliverance from the, the new Egypt, which is here in America. So we have to brace ourselves, prepare ourselves, rehearse the righteous acts mm -hmm. by keeping the commandments, by keeping the Passover, doing all the things rehearsing to get ourselves right. Go ahead. And from all the lands, whether he had driven them. All the lands, the four corners of the earth. The same way Christ said in Matthew 24, he going to gather his elect. Mm -hmm. Same thing. Okay, was that it? No, sir. And I will bring them again into their land mm. that I have gave unto their fathers. Mm. That's, That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Verse <laughs> okay, go ahead. He got a request. Give him verse 16, man. Since verse 16. Uh -huh. Behold, I will send for many fishes, said uh -huh. the Lord, uh -huh. and they shall fish them. Well, uh, we're fishers right now, are we? But then it'll be time to be hunters. Oh, yeah, we fishers right now. Go ahead. And after will I send for many hunters, mm. and they shall hunt them from every mountain and from every hill out of the holes of the rocks. Out of the holes of the rocks. Who will be in the holes of the rocks? The bunkers. You think you're going to hide from the Lord, huh? Get your doomsday bunkers together. Oh, we're coming for you in the rocks. See, the stuff y'all think y'all getting away with, the most high going to deal with that. But what do we have to look forward to, y'all? I say all this despair. What do we as the Israelites have to look forward to? Give me Daniel. 
chapter 7 and verse 18. And it'll be Daniel 2 and 44. Mm-hmm. What do we have to look forward to? We talked about all this stuff about being saved, the righteous are scared to be saved. What do we have to what do we have to look forward to, y'all? We can't. Go to Daniel without going to my favorite scripture. What's your favorite scripture, brother? I, I'm going to bring it out. I know you are. Daniel, <laughs> Daniel 7 and verse 18. Go ahead, brother. But the saints of the Most High uh-huh. shall take the kingdom. He, is he asking for it? Shall take the kingdom. Shall take the kingdom. Future tense. Go ahead. And possess the kingdom. And possess. How long? Forever. How long? Forever. He didn't say. He said. He said. Forever, right? Mm-hmm. Wow. Go ahead. Even forever uh-huh. and ever. Uh-huh. That's it. That's it. Now, verse 27. Uh-huh. And the kingdom and dominion and the greatness of the kingdom under the whole heaven uh-huh. shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High. That's a future tense. Right. <laughs> Whose kingdom is an everlasting kingdom. Mm. Mm-hmm. And all dominions shall serve and obey him. That's because we are a kingdom of priests. That's so kingdom. beautiful. Think about that, y'all. <laughs> That's what you have to look forward to if you stay faithful and keep the commandments. Mm-hmm. That's what we have to look forward to, y'all. Daniel 2 and 44. Stay in Daniel. And I want second answer, chapter 2. The book of Daniel. 44. Chapter 2 and verse 44. Go ahead. And in the days of these kings uh-huh. shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom. Which shall never be destroyed. It shall never be destroyed because every kingdom couldn't stand the test of time. Including this kingdom is not going to stand the test of time. Every kingdom fell. This kingdom right here, joint heirs of Christ, is never going to fall. Go ahead. And the kingdom shall not be left to other people. Well, you sure everybody ain't going to hold hands? And the kingdom shall not be left to other people. Everybody ain't going to partake in this. Because guess what? Y'all didn't partake in our affliction. So why should y'all partake in our glory? Where was y'all at when they put us in cargo slave ships? Y'all was partaking in it. Where was y'all at when we was being beaten down and, 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 and dogs was, 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 was being sicked on us? Where was y'all at? Everybody want the glory, but they don't want to deal with the affliction. Hmm. Was that it? No, sir. But it shall break in pieces and consume all these kingdoms, uh-huh. and it shall stand forever. How long? Forever. That's a long time. Beautiful. Hmm. But, but what are we fighting for? Second Ezra chapter 2 verse 34 We're going to finish up The book of Second Ezra chapter 2 And verse 34 mm-hmm. And therefore I say unto you Go ahead. O ye heathen that fear And understand Look for your shepherd uh-huh. He shall give you everlasting rest mm, Don't we need it For he For he is not at hand Uh huh that shall come in the end of the world. Oh, yes. In the end of the world, as you know it. Yes. <laughs> as you know it. Read. Be ready. Be to what? Be ready. Be ready. Get, your, get ourselves, like, like the virgin, have to get ourselves ready for the bridegroom. Get ourselves ready for Christ. Read. To the reward of the kingdom, mm. for the everlasting light shall shine upon you forevermore. Go ahead. Flee the shadow of this world. Flee the shadow of this world. Flee wickedness. Flee that. <laughs> I ain't said flee doctrine. <laughs> <laughs> That's what made me think about it. It said flee from the shadow of this world. Right. The whole earth is wicked. Right. Where you gonna go? Right. You talking about something of a flee. Brother, this <laughs> if judgment set, I don't care where you go run to. Your butt gonna get judged. Go ahead. Flee the shadow of this world. Uh-huh. Receive the joyfulness of your glory. Mm. I testify my Savior openly. That's right. Oh, re- oh, receive the gift that is given you. Go ahead. And be glad. And be happy. Go ahead. Giving thanks unto him that have called you to be the heavenly kingdom. Call you to the to heavenly the kingdom. kingdom. Think about that. Read on. Arise and stand up. Do what? Arise and stand, stand up. Stand up. Go ahead. Behold the number of those that the sealed. That be what? That be sealed. Hold it right there. Give me the book of Isaiah. Mm-hmm. Chapter 8 and verse 16. It said to be sealed, right? Mm-hmm. You got to be sealed because those that be sealed. Sealed with what? Not wickedness. <laughs> Isaiah. 
chapter 8 and verse 16. What, what, it mean, what does it mean to be sealed? The book of Isaiah, chapter 8 and verse 16. Go ahead. Bind up the testimony. Bind up the testimony of the Christ. Bind up the testimony and put it in your spirit. Read on. Seal the law. Seal the what? The law. Seal the law. That's what it means to be sealed. The law in the faith of Christ, coupled and filtered through Christ. Read on. Among my disciples. Among my disciples. Among my followers. Among my, my, along, along my followers of Christ. Go back to Second Ezra's brother and read that again. Ver, uh, verse 38. Arise up and stand. Behold, the number of those that be sealed in the feast of the Lord. In the feast of the Lord. Go ahead. Which are departed from the shadow of the world. Because you because you, you separate yourselves from the world. Be ye separate. That's what he says. Be ye separate from the world. Read on. And have received glorious garments of the Lord. That's what you want. The glorious garments. The glorious body. The, the rulership. That's what you want. Read on. Mm. Take thy number, O Sion, <laughs> and shut up those of thine that are clothed in white. Mm, go ahead. Righteousness of the saints. Uh-huh. Which did what? Which have fulfilled the law of the Lord. I thought the laws weren't important. <laughs> he said to fulfill the law of the Lord. Read. The number of thy children whom thou longest for is fulfilled. Go ahead. Wow. <laughs> Romans 11. Uh -huh. <laughs> Beseech the power of the Lord. Uh-huh. That thy people, that what? Thy people, Go ahead. which have been called from the beginning, may be hollowed. Because remember, son, it was an election made in the beginning. That had to be because the both because Christ, you was already chosen already in the spirit world. He said from the beginning. Read. I Ezra saw upon the Mount Sion mm. a great people mm. whom I could not number. That's why we can't do the census because you don't supposed to be numbered. Read. And they are all praised the Lord with songs. Go ahead. And in the midst of them. There was who? There was a young man of high stature. Mm. Taller than all the rest. Mm. And upon every one of their heads. He did what? He set crowns. Let no one take your crown. Why do you think we always say that? Let no one take your crown. Mm. Rulership is what you want. Read. And was more exalted. Which I marveled at greatly. Mm, and he did what? And I asked the angel and said, Sir, what, what are these? these? Sir, what is this? Go ahead. He answered and said unto me, These be they that put off the mortal clothing. Didn't we just talk about that in, in, in 1 mm -hmm. Corinthians 15? Mm -hmm. He put off the mortal, he put off corruption to put on incorruption. Right? To do what? What did he do? And have confessed the name of God. Uh. Now they are crowned and receive palms. Mm. Go ahead. Then said I unto the angel, Go ahead. What young person is it that crowneth them uh -huh. and giveth them palms in their hands? Go ahead. Like Revelation 7 and 9. Uh -huh. So he answered and said unto me, It is the Son of God. The what? The Son of God. Go ahead. Why is this in the Apocrypha? Right. The Son of God. Right. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Whom they have confessed in the world. Mm. Then began I greatly to commend them that stood so stiffly for the name of the Lord. What does that mean? Give me the book of Psalms, chapter 119, verse 55. Because when it says stood so stiffly for the name of the Lord, what is he talking about? He's not talking about the actual name, which y'all may think. That's why precept must be upon precept. The book of Psalms, we're going back. The book of Psalms, chapter 155, one, um, 19, verse 55. The book of Psalms, chapter 119 and verse 55. Go ahead, brother. I have remembered thy name, O Lord, uh -huh. in the night, and have kept thy law. There you go. What did it say again? <laughs> I have remembered thy name, uh -huh. O Lord, uh -huh. in the night, uh -huh. and have kept thy law. Kept the law. So still so stiffly. Go back, second mm -hmm. Still so stiffly for what again, brother? To understand it, so he answered and said unto me, uh -huh. "It is the Son of God, uh -huh. whom they have confessed uh -huh. in the world." Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Then began I greatly to commend them that stood so stiffly for the name of the Lord. They kept the commandments. They stood so they didn't care about being persecuted. They didn't care about death. They didn't care about that. They stood so stiffly for the Lord. Read on. 
Then the angel said unto me, go thy way <laughs> and tell my people. Tell my what? My people. That's why we crying aloud, spurring not. Go and tell our people what? What manner of things and how great wonders of the Lord thy God thou hast seen. Think about that, brothers and sisters. So, First Peter, chapter two and verse twenty-one. The book of First, <laughs> the book of First Peter, mm -hmm. chapter two and verse twenty-one. Go ahead. For even hereunto were ye called. Go ahead. Because Christ also suffered for us. Christ suffered for the children of Israel. We about to celebrate that. Okay, the Passover. Mm -hmm. Okay, Christ suffered for us. We have to show commemoration by keeping the Passover. And keep the commandments and the faith of Christ. Go ahead, brother. Leaving us an example. He left us an example. Go ahead. That they should follow his his if, steps. If Christ kept the Passover, we're keeping the Passover. Right. Understand that. Not Easter Sunday. Not doing the Easter egg hunt. We're keeping the Passover, which, we, we, which, which means what? We're eating the lamb, the bitter herbs, the unleavened bread. That's, that's what Christ ate. Okay? Understand that. Read on. Who did no sin. He didn't have a foolish thought. Go ahead. Neither was guile found in his mouth. Because Christ wasn't deceitful. He was straightforward. Go ahead, brother. Verse 23. Uh -huh. Who, when he was reviled, uh -huh. reviled not again. Go ahead. And when he suffered, uh -huh. he threatened not. He didn't threaten. Go ahead. But he committed himself mm -hmm. to him that judges righteously. Righteously. So the Most High judges righteously. He committed himself to the Most High. Because Christ, I'm going to tell you all something. Christ made a statement. He said, Lord, if it be thy will. But nevertheless, if you never said that, we wouldn't be standing here today. He let it be your will. Because Christ at that time was a Gethsemane. He was in the flesh. Can y'all imagine knowing you have to die for a nation that really didn't really show you no love? But you still said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Christ understood the weight of that. Okay, so that's why at that time he he was in the flesh at that time, y'all, like we all would be. Could you picture? You know you're gonna die. That's like us going to the lecture chair for our brethren, the ones that spit on you and and did everything they could do to you. And you say I'm a I'm a, I'm a trust in the Most High. I'm gonna go ahead. And I'm gonna die for my nation. That's what Christ. That, you gotta put yourself in that mentality. That's how you know that Christ is the greatest, y'all, to show that love, in, including the people who didn't love Christ. He still showed their love and offered himself as a sacrifice. Mm -hmm. That's what people never understand. And then say, Father, forgive them. Father, forgive them. That's the example we must follow, y'all. That's why I make, that will make Christ the greatest of all time. Forget these basketball players and football players. He's the greatest of all time. I ain't saying no goat either. I'm just saying he's the great. Christ is the greatest. That's ever known. That's ever graced. Yeah, you better believe he's the lamb. <laughs> the lamb of God. He gave me <laughs> the book of Acts chapter 5 verse 29 bro. The book of Acts chapter 5 and verse 29 Go ahead Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said Go ahead We ought to obey God rather than men if That's who we must obey brothers and sisters We must obey the most high in Christ Because he is our example um, Like I said before y'all um, That's we we have to follow Christ Christ kept the Passover we, um, Lord's will, we keep the Passover tomorrow night at even, at dark. We have the Passover, brothers and sisters. Make sure you don't have any leaven or any leavening agent in your houses. Make sure that we get the leaven out of our spirits. That's the most, the most important. Make sure you understand why we're doing what we're doing, y'all. Let's not do this and, and just go along with the flow. Know why you're doing what you're doing. Okay, understand that. We must give the Most High Christ all the praise and glory. For not us to even be in this truth, y'all, because without Christ, we're nothing. Okay? Israel, we all we got. Peace and blessings and love to all our brothers and sisters who are repenting. We get ourselves together, okay? All right? With that, and we're going to say shalom. shalom. shalom.